This is Anona's Worship, Grow, Serve, Live podcast for September 15th, 2024. God's Messy Family, Part 4, Loss and Promise in the Family of God, with Rev. Jeremy Harrington. This is one of our sermon series episodes, produced by Anona United Methodist Church. For more information and video versions, visit anona.com. And now, for another great message. So we're continuing on in our sermon series talking about messy families. I've got to say thank you. We've had a number of you all reach out to both Richard and I sharing how meaningful this has been, saying, you know what, we've got messy families too, um, and just right there with us saying, you know, it is difficult sometimes, and how do we walk this journey and live God's call in our life, and what does that mean for that middle of the story and the end of our story and all those elements in between? So we really appreciate you all uh, continuing this process with us couple more weeks left of study. Today we're continuing on talking about, especially in Abram or Abraham and Sarah from Genesis and their journey. Now, if you remember early on, God made a promise to Abraham to make him a great nation from all their descendants, even in their older years, because they were in these older years as that story starts, and their response to that promise, and they followed God's call in their life, and along the way, they experienced the messiness of family and faith, just like you and I experienced messiness with our families and in our faith. And the last Sunday, I really appreciated Richard in particular talking about the importance of that middle, the middle of the story and how that's so important to our journey that we don't want to lose the stories and the message and the connections there as well as the end of the story as well. But I've got to say last week when we talked about Sarah giving birth to Isaac and the promise being fulfilled, that's not really the end of the story. Because this morning we're going to talk about the end of the story, at least the end of the story for one of the two individuals. So our scripture today comes from Genesis chapter 23, and we're using verses 1 and 2. And it's titled, Sarah's Death and Burial. Sarah lived for over 127 years. This was the length of Sarah's life. And Sarah died at Kirath Arba, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham went in to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, as I first started wrestling with this passage for the message this morning, the first question I just was scratching my head about is, why is this passage included in Scripture? What, what value does this have? Yes, it's a sad occasion. Why not just stop at the birth of Isaac and the fulfillment of God's promise, right? Because the point was talking about God's promise to Abraham and Sarah, and it was fulfilled in the birth of Isaac, great, and then they lived those later years happily ever after, amen. Why include her death in Scripture there? As I process that and kind of walk through this week, I realize if we're going to talk about how messy families live our lives, including people like Abraham and Sarah, we also have to talk about how messy families experience loss, whether it's loss of friends, loss of family, maybe even our own loss for ourselves at some point down the road for us. And so that's my first point this morning, that messy relationships include loss. Here's Abraham losing Sarah, who lived to be 127 years old. I just can't imagine. I'm in my 50s and I'm exhausted. You know, I, I look at these people, I try, I try to keep healthy, I go to gym in, when I can in the mornings when I'm feeling better, and I've got people that are decades beyond me, and they are running laps around me on the treadmill and lifting weights, and it just, it amazes me, people, in those later years, just that, that energy and enthusiasm, I'm tired. Whew. But she lived to be 127, and I'm sure Sarah's life was filled with just so many great stories, so many great memories, but I'm also certain that there were stories in Sarah's life that were left unfinished when she passed. And so for me, this past week was a real reflection on several moments. As pastors, we are called to be in a lot of different environments, in a lot of different situations, and, and kind of manage a lot of different moments, and this week for me in particular, I think reflecting on, I, there were two funerals I was involved with, as well as what we call an all-pro dads event, I'm going to tell you about that in a minute, and a hospice visit. And every one of those really kind of spoke into this message of messiness including loss 
for this week. I want to start first with the funeral for Edna Falk. Now, some of you may know her, some of you may not. Edna is one of the matriarchs of Anona here. Edna was our oldest member of Anona. She was a member for 67 years of this church. She moved here in the 50s. Uh, she uh, lived to be 100 years old. She passed away just shy of her 101st birthday. And at her funeral, there were stories being shared of how she lived her life and how she connected with folk and made a difference in the community at some challenging times. And how, especially here at Anona, before we were even United Methodist, this was Anona Community Church. And she sang in the choir and she taught in the Sunday school classes and helped our youth ministry and volunteered in the kitchen. And one of the beautiful stories that her son shared was even in her later years when she didn't have that energy to do all those things that she did in her earlier years, she had a note on her fridge with two words, find joy. And her mission every morning when she got up out of bed, even in her 90s, was how am I going to find joy in this day? And as she passed, it was a true sense of loss. You could see the loss in the, in the eyes of the family that were present. And it was a loss for us as a church for the many years in history that we shared with her together. A lot like Sarah, I would imagine. A lot of years of history there. But here's the thing. Loss is not limited to death. We can experience loss in other ways. We can experience loss in the midst of divorce. You see, the second funeral I had this week was for a gentleman named Bobby. Now, Bobby was a good man. He was in his late 60s. He worked hard all his life. He owned his own business. He worked hard. And years ago, he married, had a wife and a young son, and he experienced brokenness in his life. Years ago, having to go through a divorce. And I could see how that brokenness affected the family. It was a loss for the family, for the friends that knew them well. For some folks, loss might be something different. It might be a job. It might be a vocation or maybe even talents or skills that you possess. Uh, One of the things I've been blessed with over the years is working with a lot of musicians. I've been a music director for a lot of years, and I've worked with a lot of talented musicians, especially in their later years. And it's been an um, uh, interesting experience walking with musicians as they age and as they struggle with their musical skills, maybe as a singer or a pianist or a guitarist or an organist or a conductor or a band leader. And as they struggle with accepting the loss of some of those musical skills as they age, and who am I now that I can't do what I used to do 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago in this particular chapter in my life? So loss can be talents or vocation. Loss can be in the form of disease whether it's cancer or um, strokes or heart attacks or Alzheimer's, it's things that can rob us of our quality of time with those that we love. Even robbing maybe the very memories that we've built with people over the lifetime. This past week for our family was a a challenging one, I'll say. Uh, My parents celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary this past Friday. And while most years that's been a real celebratory event, you know, we meet with them and have cake and maybe take them out to dinner and look at old pictures and share stories. It was bittersweet this year. Mom is in a uh, nursing home in a memory care unit with advanced dementia. And so we spent their 60th wedding anniversary with my dad sitting at her bedside going through their wedding album pictures together of that special day 60 years ago that she no longer remembers. Messy relationships include loss of many types. The second thing about messy relationships is it it also allows us to reveal our character. Abraham was in scripture there dealing with the loss of Sarah. This is his wife. This is his life partner for so many years. And she's passed away and he's in a foreign land. He needs to find a place to lay her body to rest. And so he approached the Hittites in later verses here. And he says, look, I am a stranger in your land. He's showing them respect and honor. And he says, I would like to purchase some property so I can bury my wife properly in these moments. And the Hittites responded very differently. They said, look, Abraham, you're a prince among us. You don't need to buy anything. You just simply point to that land that you want and we will simply give it to you. And in that moment, Abraham could have simply accepted their offer and taken whatever land that he wanted to bury Sarah. 
He could have taken advantage of his friends and family discount right then and there. Let me tell you, they offered it to him, but he didn't. He didn't. Even in his time of grief, even in Abraham's time of loss, he stayed true to the character within him. That character of faithfulness. And he insisted on paying full price of silver for the cave that he selected for her burial, even though the owner wanted to give him that land. And so he pays 400 shekels of silver. And in that moment, you can see Abraham's character shine brightly. That character of faithfulness. It shone brightly to the Hittites and honoring them and being faithful to them, even though they offered. He said, no, this is, this is honoring you too. He honored his wife, Sarah, in finding this place to lay her to rest. And he honored his God in following through into that Christian character that we hope to be ourselves. As I was reflecting back on that funeral for Bobby, remember Bobby that experienced that divorce some years ago, what was beautiful was in his funeral, the stories that were shared by families about his commitment to care for his family after the divorce. And they shared stories about him uh, coming to the home with, and, and fixing his ex-wife's dishwasher because it was broken and she needed that repaired and didn't have the money to get it fixed. And they shared stories about it coming over to her house to help repair things as they needed and support her in the raising of their son. And they talked about stories about how he supported his son all through his school years and was there for him in, in his formative years. And then as he grew up and decided to go to college and eventually to law school, his dad was right there every step of the way cheering him on that despite Bobby's messy family situation that character of love and faithfulness shine through even in those difficult chapters in his life messy relationships reveal character you see, we're created in God's image, and we also hope to reflect that same image through our actions, through our words, through that character within us, especially during those messier moments in life. That's when we so most need those fruit of the Spirit. You remember them with me? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But the reality is we fall short, right? We're human. We fall short of oftentimes reflecting those fruit of the Spirit, of living up to the character that God calls us to be, especially during some messier times in our life. The other thing that went on this week was the All Pro Dads uh, gathering. Now, if you're not familiar with All Pro Dads, this is a program of churches connecting with schools. Richard uh, started this some years back. We are partnering with five elementary schools in our community, and it's a really exciting program. We go in before school starts several times a year. Uh, it was designed, the curriculum was actually designed by Tony Dungy, if any of you all are Bucks fans, remember Tony Dungy? He designed this curriculum, and it was meant to connect dads and their kids together because they found, especially with dads, there was a real struggle sometimes of them spending that quality time with their kids. And they felt if we could have a time in the school to connect with them, maybe even have a character development moment, that would be great. And so we do these all pro dads. The first thing we do is we buy a bunch of Chick-fil-A chicken biscuits. Let me tell you, we got quite the budget for chicken biscuits at Chick-fil-A. It ain't cheap, but it's important because we go in and we bring a big thing of Chick-fil-A biscuits and dads come in with their kids before school. Uh, this was uh, this week I was at um, Anona Elementary right up here and at Bowder Elementary right over by uh, Seminole High School there. And dads come in and we give them chicken biscuits. And then one of the first things they do is they do this moment called the I'm proud of you moment. And it's, to me, it's one of the best moments of the morning. The dads stand up, they introduce themselves, and they talk about their son or daughter and what they're proud of them from the past week. And they might say, I'm proud of my daughter, Sally, because she just got an A in her English class. And everyone's, they give, we give one clap per kid. So we give a clap per kid. And then someone over here says, I'm proud of Johnny because he got into the, the baseball group and was able to play his first game this week. All right. And it's just this beautiful moment of kids being lifted up by their dads. And then one of the things we move to is every time we meet, we talk about a character skill a character development. This week, we talked about respect. 
How do we show respect? And we talked about kids. What does this mean for you? And so we do it in fun, in fun games. So we had these little scenarios that the kids had to decide. And what I did is I put a little timer up on the screen at 60 seconds. I said, kids, you have 60 seconds to figure out how to show respect in these different scenarios. And my favorite one was one of the last ones. The scenario was, okay, you are not tired. And it's kind of late at night on a school night. And you know your favorite YouTube uh, influencer is dropping their latest video online. Really different than the old days of television. I can't say, when you're watching, to, you know, ABC at 8 o'clock, you know, like, ABC, what? Huh? So uh, when your favorite YouTube person, they're dropping their latest episode, you so want to watch it, but mom and dad said, it's bedtime. How do you show respect and go? And the clock started ticking. The kids were all talking back and forth. How do we do? Well, what do you think? And they're talking in little groups and talking with dads and figuring out. And then at the end, we would have them kind of each, okay, who wants to share what they, solutions? So I had one kid raise her hand, little Susie. I was like, okay, what was your solution? And she says, I would ask permission from my parents. And I went, yes, great. That is showing respect as a parent. I agree. And then I had another kid. I said, well, how would you handle that situation? He says, well, I would convince my dad to watch the show with me. And I went, okay, we're sliding a little bit off of the respect on that one. But okay, I'll take it. It's, it's all right. It's close enough. You're good. And I have my third kid. How would you handle that? He says, I would go to bed right when my parents tell me. And I said, great job. And then he keeps talking. He says, and then after my parents go to sleep, I'd wake back up and watch the show. <laughs> Okay, you kind of missed the respect part there. But here's the thing, guys. You and I are no different. Whether we're 7 or 47 or 97, we're no different. There are times in our life that we are in messy situations and in messy moments. The pressure is on, and sometimes we fall short of making that wise choice in that moment. And it's in those moments where we need God's grace. We need to seek God's forgiveness where we can turn to a Savior who is there for us even when we mess it up. I was looking at my week. This morning alone, I have messed up on so many things, and it's only 1020. So, and I realize I need a Savior. Because when I'm left to my own devices, I will struggle. I will struggle under that pressure. I will struggle showing that character of the fruit of the Spirit when the time comes, because that's hard. That is hard to do that, folks. I'm sure you agree with that. I have those moments too. But here's the thing. It goes on to my third point. Messy relationships never give up. God fulfilled God's promise to Abraham and Sarah. Now, it took a while. It took a long while, and they really had to go through this whole journey together of what it looked like. There were messy moments at times. There were questionable things at times. But despite the challenges they faced, God was with them every step of the way. Now, you remember I was saying I had two funerals, all pro dads, and a hospice visit. Let me tell you about the hospice visit from this week. I had the opportunity to sit with my friend Sarah. Believe it or not, her name is Sarah, as we're studying about Abraham and Sarah. Her name is Sarah Horch. She is a, a member of our uh, traditional service and choir. I've known her, gosh, for probably 20 years now. I've been a member of the choir. Sarah's just an amazing lady. And yet, she's in the midst of her own messy moments of loss in her life. She's been in and out of hospitals and rehab centers for the past several years. Her health has continued to decline. She can't drive anymore. She is now at home under hospice care and confined to a bed in the back room and in the midst of just messy moments in her life. And so I got a call from the family saying, can you come see her? And I said, absolutely, I'll, make, I'll be right there. Came over to see her. And she has, folks, she has every right in that moment to really hurt and to struggle. She's in, a, she's in a tough place. She's in that kind of struggle moment in her life. And I would be very understandable if my conversations with her were just of disappointment, of sadness, of frustration, of anger, whatever it may be, because that's who we are. We struggle with those things. And yet that's not what we talked about. I walk into the room for Sarah, and I call out her name, and I can see her smile from a distance. She is smiling ear to ear. Jeremy, come over here. And we started talking stories together. We started talking stories about her family and how important her family is to her. We talked about stories of her friends. We talked about stories about her dog, which I think is probably first on the list. Her dog's very important to her. 
We talked about her stories of church and her years of singing in the choir and the trips and cantatas and the things that she was involved in. And we talked about her love for Jesus. And you could see that character of love shining in her as she's laying in this bed, walking through time of hospice. Because she held fast to know that the assurance that God is with her every step of the way. And friends, that's my prayer for you this morning and for me. That we're going to experience messiness in our life. We're going to experience messiness of loss. Maybe for some of us, it is the passing of a loved one. Maybe it's been recently. Maybe it's been weeks or months. Maybe it's been years. And we're still dealing with that loss. Maybe for some of us, it's divorce. And the relationship that we've never been able to reconcile and struggle with that over our our years or months or whatever that may be. Maybe it's a health situation and we're struggling with that loss of that loved one not being able to do, or maybe even ourselves not being able to do what we once were able to do. And we try, we try to shine that light of Christ. We try to show what it means to live out that in our hearts. And yet sometimes whether we make the wise choice in our life and and God shines through in that moment, or sometimes we don't, all of us can hold on to that assurance to know that God is with us in the mess. It's kind of like the song the band just sang a little bit ago. When life gets messy, who do you choose? Well, for me, I choose Jesus. How about you? Let's pray. God, as we deal with messy families and messy lives and messy loss, so many of us come from different experiences of loss, maybe even right now. Loss of a loved one who's touched our hearts for so long and we hurt. We yearn for those times together with them. Maybe they're still with us and we're dealing with the ravages of cancer, strokes, Alzheimer's, dementia, and we see their life slowly drifting and experience loss. Maybe it's a broken relationship with a spouse or a loved one or a child or a good friend that we just struggle with. How do we mend? How do we step forward? How do we find your love in the midst? Whatever it is, Lord, we turn it over to you. We're not perfect. We make mistakes. We fall short of the light of Christ in us. And even though we desire so much to live out the fruit of the Spirit day to day, there are times that we struggle. Forgive us when we do. Remind us through your assurance, through your Son, Jesus Christ, that there is that light of hope and joy within us, that we can have that message on our refrigerator that says, find joy today. And we can turn that moment around wherever we are. And through your son, Jesus Christ, we can shine that light of love, of joy, of peace, of patience, of whatever the time in that moment needs and find a joy in you that is truly everlasting. We pray this in your son's precious name. Amen. As friends, my prayer for you this week is whenever a messy situation comes your way, is that my prayer is that that light of Christ, that that character of love or grace or whatever that character is, will shine forth in you. And if and when it doesn't, and we fall short, that's okay. Because God's never going to give you up. If you found this message meaningful, share it with others. To find more great episodes and stay up to date, subscribe to another United Methodist Church's podcast on Apple Music, Spotify, or anywhere you find your favorite podcast shows. In addition, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and find the community on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Anona Church. You can join us on our campus in Largo, Florida, and discover new ways to reach out to the Pinellas County community. Be a part of the Anona Church family as we worship, grow, serve, and live.